Hi everybody and welcome to In The Showroom. I'm Jamie from Talk GT and I've got the enviable job today of getting to show you around this absolutely beautiful 1970s Nissan Skyline. So the origin of the species and the first time that we saw the GTR bad adorned to, uh, to one of the early Skylines. Um, this is obviously one of the two-door coupe versions. So they made just a tad over a thousand of these. Um, released to the public in March 1971. This car actually registered in June of 71 and production ran for only a couple of years. So a very, very rare car. Not many have survived. A lot of them obviously um, met a grisly end through motorsport and uh, a car that, you know, is an absolute legend, one of my absolute favorites and, uh, and one that's really, really nice to be able to show you around. So. You know, what we forget with cars from this period is how little they are, how lovely all the proportions are. This is 1100 kg curb weight, so it's a light, small, beautiful little car. We've got, um, you know, very, very iconic wing-mounted mirrors. So these, uh, you know, instantly scream, you know, period Japan, really, really sort of key bit of design language for these early skylines. And actually, when you're driving the car, you know, they, they function much, much better than you would expect. Um, this one wearing period co correct Watanabe racing wheels of the time. So these are like a sort of European mini light copy. Um, we can see the, the stance and the way the car sits on these. A 15 inch is just absolute perfection. We've got lovely skinny wheels up front, nice wide wheel and tire package at the back. We've got the very, very quintessentially Japanese arch extensions on the back here. You know, they've really become part of the Japanese tuning and styling scene over the years. But here we go, 50 years ago, them being used for the original purpose intended, which was obviously to be able to widen the track at the rear. We've got a limited slip diff in this car and, you know, big, wide, sticky rear tires. Other than that, it's all up to you. You know, if you thought it looked good from the front, it looks equally fantastic from the back. We've got, uh, you know, lovely skyline badging, very period correct, you know, chrome grille, which sits really nice and close to the bodywork. It's got this sort of weird looking jutty little spoiler that juts out of the boot lid here. And then, you know, looking at the back profile of the car, here's the first time that we got to see the quad rear light design. So this has become, you know, standard design language for the, for the Skylines moving forward. And we see this right up to the R35, later referred to as the sort of afterburner rear lights. But, you know, early 70s car here. We've got the quad rear light design with the lovely chrome bezels. Just looks so, so pretty and, and, and correct. This one's wearing its factory original exhaust. So we've got, you know, tiny, tiny bore, little twin exit, pea shooter exhaust on it. Remarkable that it's still on the car, really. And, uh, you know, this emits a fantastic howl from the S20 engine, which we'll get to in a minute when we get under the bonnet. But, you know, total feel good car, this. Sounds fantastic. Smells fantastic. It, it is just fantastic. Um, let's have a look at the inside. Okay, so again, you know, just look at it in here. Absolutely stunning. So we've got um, glorious vinyl interior. So lovely traditional sort of buckets that you will have seen in, in everything sporty from this period, as is your headlining door cards with the lovely little chrome details, beautiful old chrome winders here, these little quarter light windows with this, with this lovely mechanical little locking mechanism here. And, uh, you know, in general, just, just so, so cool and, and lovely, you know, it smells amazing in here. Everything is, um, you know, beautifully delicate and of the time. So we've got a lovely little wooden, you know, shift knob here with its gorgeous little tied gaiter. Just so simple and so lovely. You know, tiny little handbrake um, lever here. Again, is very delicate and, and, and beautifully sort of positioned and designed. 
gorgeous switch gear, your 2000 GT branding in the middle of the dash there, and then little skyline touches here and there. We've got, um, you know, it's original steering wheel, which is, which is lovely to see as well, because many of these will have been changed for something kind of later or sort of more racy. So to see this original steering wheels is very nice indeed. And, um, you know, everything in here is just fantastic. We've got these original non-inertia kind of mid-mounted seat belts here. You know, very, very correct again. Um, the retaining clasp is, is, is equally gorgeous. These things being non-inertia, once you've got them adjusted and, and you, you know, you've got them clipped in, it's a bit like being in a harness. You realize you can't reach anything, but, um, but very, very cool all the same. Um, you know, we'll move through to have a look at the engine now. So if we pop the bonnet and we'll have a look at the engine bay. So obviously we've got a reverse opening bonnet here with a lovely little latch to, to keep it up and stop the wind catching it. And then, you know, the absolutely glorious uh, S20 engine from Nissan. So its original home was in the uh, R380 sort of Group A race car that was designed very much with Porsche in mind. So we've got a, um, you know, straight six, twin cam, 24 valve, which in 1971 was really, really pushing the boundaries, you know, quad cam, um, quad valve, sorry, twin cam, 160 brake horsepower, 7,000 um, RPM red line, absolutely screams, you know, the, the noise from it is the stuff of legend. Uh, this one is wearing here triple Webers on trumpets. I mean, who doesn't like triple Webers on trumpets? I certainly do. This car is supplied with the original airbox, which is painted red like many of them were. Um, but, you know, no one's going to fit that because who doesn't want to look at triple Webers with, with trumpets? Originally, it will have been on um, like Solex Makuni carbs, but, you know, this one's on ro rocking Webers now, which is, which is a good thing. Uh, another sort of um, feature of this that was quite a far ahead of its time is we've got um, dual brake cylinders on this. So obviously we've got drums on the back, discs on the front, you know, a car of this sort of format in the early 70s, having dual brake cylinders is really, really far out again. So, um, you know, another real motorsport touch. Looking at the engine bay, which just looks like perfection itself, in, in my opinion, we've got this lovely, lovely finish to the rocker cover. The engine itself sat super, super low. So, you know, miles below the strut tops here, sat hunkered right down in the engine bay. It's designed, you know, with old school motorsport engineering for one reason, and, and that is to go out and be competitive. And, you know, my Lord, wasn't it competitive? Had, uh, you know, decimated the field from the off, really. And um, its kind of racing heritage is, is as strong as, as any of the real motorsport legends from anywhere in the world. Very, very cool. Very, very beautiful. So in summary, um, you know, difficult to summarize a car like this, but uh, I'm obviously not supposed to have favorites, but uh, which is difficult in a room like this because obviously, you know, there's a lot of potential favorites. But uh, for me personally, you know, absolutely love the cars of this period. This is the, you know, cornerstone of any serious JDM car collection. It's the car that, you know, as JDM car fans or just general car fans, you know, we all lust after this thing. To be able to show you round one that's as, as lovely as this, you know, is a real treat. It's here in the showroom amongst friends. And, uh, you know, what a, what a car, what a beautiful, beautiful car. So um, if you like this content, give us a thumbs up. If you want to let us know what you'd like to see next, pop a comment in the comments box below. Make sure you hit subscribe and the bell. Uh, you'll get a notification next time we drop these videos. We're going to be doing a few of these. So, uh, you know, if you want to keep up with, with new content from us, hit that bell and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks.